Okay, got it. That doesn't look right. Huh. Nash! Give them a heads up. Right. <gasps> Is that Marco? <gasps> right. Uh, Nash, Nash, let's go this way. <sighs> that was close. Meerkats! There are a lot of them. Several meerkats can live in one burrow, but the whole group can be as many as 40. Lots of meerkats. Their burrows are connected by underground tunnels. Look. Babies! Right. They all work together to take care of their young and to get food for everyone. You mean 40 breakfasts, 40 lunches, and 40 dinners every day? Yeah. They hunt small rodents, lizards, insects, even poisonous scorpions. But they eat fruit, too. Look. They're all standing with their backs to each other around the burrow. They guard their burrows to protect them from predators. Ooh. To keep their babies safe? I think so. And when something comes around, they give each other the heads up to let all the other meerkats know that something is coming. a big ball of poop. You don't think it's gonna eat it? Ew. Ew! Uh, let's look it up. It's a dung beetle. Dung? What's that? Dung is another word for poop. And yes, it's going to eat it. Yuck! Why? It says here that whenever an animal eats something, not all of it gets digested. Some tiny undigested bits end up in its dung. And that's what dung beetles eat? Yes. They also get water from the dung. Okay. This time I'm going to say it. Yuck. Where's it going? Yeah. If they're going to eat dung, why not eat it right here? Yeah, there's plenty. They bury it so they can eat it later? And they lay their eggs in the dung balls. It looks like it's working really hard. That ball is huge in comparison to the beetle. Dung beetles are the strongest insect. It can move a ball over a thousand times its weight. That's like you pulling a school bus, Nash. Wow. But that's not all. Dung beetles help the environment of the savanna by burying and eating tons of dung produced by other animals. You mean they help to keep this place clean? Yes. Plus, flies lay eggs and dung. So by eating and burying so much of it, the dung beetles stop the fly eggs from hatching. So, fewer flies. That's amazing. Actually, dung beetles are amazing. Dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle. 
They've got a dirty job that someone's gotta do. They're small but mighty and they're tidy too. We're lucky there's a bug that's willing to lug around so much poop. They go to work every single day with a tumbling dance that looks like play. But if you had to do a job with poo, would you? Polo Marine Mode. And down we go! Hey, it says here that the ocean has different zones that get different amounts of sunlight. Right now, we're in the topmost zone, called the sunlit zone. Plenty of sunlight can reach this area, but the deeper we go down, the darker it gets. Below the sunlit zone is the twilight zone. Here, a little sunlight can reach. And below that, deep, deep down, is a midnight zone. Light can't reach here at all, so it's completely dark. Wow! It's getting really dark. And we're here. Uh, it's kind of spooky. I'll turn the headlights on. Whoa! What is that? A rat tail fish. It's named that because of its really long tail fin. In the deep ocean, only plants and animals that can survive extreme pressure live here. And most of them look very unusual. Ooh, like that creature. Yes, that's a type of sea slug called a nudibranch. It's cool, but I don't see Nash's dolphin. What's that thing? What is it? Wow! Jellyfish! <gasps> and they're glowing! When a creature can make its own light, it's called bioluminescence. It's very useful when there's no sunlight around. Lucky! Dolphin! <gasps> Nash, you found it! The glow from the jellyfish helped you see where your toy landed. Oh, yeah! Way to go, Nash! All right. We got it! Nice! nice. Good work, Willow! Dolphin. Here you go, Nash. Good as new. Ah. Hey! Wow. Just a little soggy still. <laughs> cool! Yeah! Aww. Dolphin! Yay! <gasps> Like that one. <gasps> it is one! And it's doing it! Sea turtle! Sea turtle! Oh, it's a baby sea, sea turtle. turtle! Lily did say lots of pictures. Okay, I'm done. Seagulls? Oh, this is bad. Seagulls are predators of baby sea turtles. Predators? You mean they want to eat it? But it just hatched. He's helpless. Poor turtle, poor turtle, poor turtle. Poor turtle, poor turtle. Grab it. Put it in the water ourselves. Huh? Nash says he wants us to pick it up and bring it to the sea ourselves. That's a great idea. Yay! Nash, wait. In nature, it's best to let creatures do things by themselves. We should only pick them up if there's no other way to help them. <sighs> Go away, <laughs> If we could scare them off, it could give the turtle time to get back to the water. But what are seagulls scared of? Caterpillars? Thunder? Broccoli? Aha! Uh -huh. Seagulls are afraid of hawks. So we'll make hawk sounds. They sound like... Um, uh, I don't know about hawks, but your farm animal impressions are great, Gorby. 
Here's what a hawk sounds like. Nash, we need to be way louder to scare them. I've got an idea! Audrey, play the hawk sound through the polar boat speakers as loud as you can. Raising volume to maximum. Nash, now would be a perfect time for a picture. All right, let's take some photos. <laughs> of the sea turtle, I meant. <laughs> 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 